Notes. Page 8. Okay, it says there, the heating curve of a substance is shown below. All right? Now, <coughs> um, they didn't tell us what substance this is, but we do see that there's a phase change just below 40 degrees Celsius, and then there's a phase change around, or a, a, a higher than 120. Okay, so it's definitely not water, but we don't know what it is. Okay, you can see this temperature versus time. Then here we can see it starts at zero degrees Celsius. What phase do we think it is there at the beginning? A solid. All right. Then somewhere the temperature remains constant. There's a phase change. There it goes from a solid to a liquid. Yes. And we call that the melting process. Then it's a liquid. There it goes from a liquid to a gas. We call that boiling or we call it evaporation. And then it's just a gas. Okay. Now, something that I didn't say last week and I remembered this weekend is there where the phase changes. There we have two phases. Okay. Like when our ice block is melting, you already have a bit of liquid of some of the ice that have melted, but you still have sometimes a block of ice. Yes. Okay. Or while something is boiling, you see the gas going up, so you see the gas is forming, but you still have liquid in your pot. Okay? So when you have a phase change, you have two phases. Okay? But after that has happened, ooh, that must be a gas, then you only have one phase. Or after everything has melted your ice block, then you have just the liquid. All right. Now the ask there. Write down the physical state of the substance at time 15 minutes. So we check at time 15 minutes, we see the phase is what? Seba Batso? 3.2.1. What phase is it at 15 minutes? A liquid. Okay. Then I ask, what is the boiling point of the substance, Courtney? Okay. Let's see. We need to go from there to there. We need to go from 120 to 160. How many lines do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines. Okay. So 40 degrees must happen in 10 lines. Okay. So each line is 4 degrees. Okay. So we go 1. Where was that? 1, 2, 3, 3. Let me just check. 1, 2, 3. So there is the boiling point of the substance so we have to count in fours so that is 120 124 128 132 degrees celsius okay right so 132 degrees celsius now they ask how will the average kinetic energy okay how will the temperature of the particles be affected between only right increase decrease or remains the same <coughs> Sorry, so from zero to five minutes table from zero to five minutes. What happens to the average kinetic energy? It increases Okay, and from five to ten um, Kutlano, It remains the same because remember I said when you hear the word average kinetic energy, you must think temperature. Okay. Then they ask, refer to the kinetic molecular theory to fully explain the answer to question 3.2.3b. You can see it comes three marks. Okay. Rory, tell me what did you say? Okay, sorry, what did you start with? Yeah, but sorry, I just, I couldn't hear. Okay, you're missing something. To overcome intermolecular forces to do what? Okay, so you will get two out of the three marks, okay? So I'm looking for the words energy is used or absorbed. Okay, the next thing I'm looking for is to overcome the intermolecular forces 
And the last thing that I want to see is to cause or whatever um, a phase change or you can say to cause um, the substance to melt or to cause it to go from a solid to a liquid. Yes. Yes. Okay, any questions there? Nothing. That was your only homework, eh? Okay, now I want to go together, I want to do it with you, page 9. Okay, so that is also a past paper. <coughs> okay, it says there, the vapor pressure versus temperature graph below was obtained for four unknown liquids, A, B, C, D. Atmospheric pressure is measured at 101.3 now that stands for kilo pascal kilo pascal k p a kilo pascal okay so pressure is measured in pascal and atmospheric pressure is um, so big it's in kilo pascal all right now um what did i wanted to say kilo pascal Okay, now before I go on there. They asked there, define the term boiling point. Define the term boiling point. Can anyone remember the definition for boiling point? Yes, Mom. The temperature of the liquid at which its vapor pressure equals that, the atmospheric pressure. It's external. Atmospheric or external, doesn't matter. So the temperature where the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure okay that is crucial that you know that definition especially for this year Muy well. so the temperature where a liquid vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure Okay, so if you look at that graph, you see here that we have the vapor pressure of the four different liquids, and then we have the temperature. Okay, now as it gets warmer, what will happen to uh, the substance? It will start to boil more and will start to evaporate more. Yes, so there you can see as it boils, as it gets warmer, the vapor pressure gets bigger. Okay, now somewhere there you see that dotted line. That is the atmospheric pressure. That is the atmospheric pressure. And according to the definition, the boiling point is where the temperature, where the vapor pressure, the vapor pressure of the particles, is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So there where the vapor pressure crosses the atmospheric pressure, that is the boiling point of the substances so i want you to indicate that there for yourself and tell yourself that is where the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure that is the boiling point are you writing this down Okay, right. Now I'll ask, use the information given in the graph and answer the following questions. Write down the boiling point of substance A. Kamu, what is... Ah, no, substance A, sorry, substance B. What is the boiling point of substance B? Look on your graph.
Oh, oh, we must do B. Oh, I guess I guess B. Yes, you can. Who are you calling? Courtney, what do you say? Say again? 80 degrees. Because you see there, the boiling point is where the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So there. Okay. And this is 75 until 100. So this must be 80, 85, 90, 95. So there... 80 degrees Celsius is the boiling point. Okay. Then they ask, which uh, a liquid which remains a liquid at 115 degrees Celsius? Okay, so let's go to 115. Where is that? 100, 105, 110, one. Ooh, how is this possible? That must be 120, eh? I remember now. That is a mistake there. Okay, anyway. So 105, 110, 115. Okay, it must still be a liquid at 115. Okay, so these ones, C, B, A, they have all boiled before that. A has boiled at 55 degrees Celsius, so it's a gas. B has boiled at 80, it's a gas. C has boiled at 100, it's a gas. At 115, this one is starting to change phase. There, it is boiling, right? So it's still a liquid and it's busy changing into a gas. It's starting to change into a gas. So the one that is still a liquid at 115 is D. And then which one will most likely be water, Cloney? Water. Yes. Which one, A, B, C, D, will, do you think will be water? Why do you say C? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as you can see there on the graph. Hmm? What do I see on the graph? <coughs> what is C's boiling point? Of C. A hundred. And where does water boil? Around about a hundred. Okay, so we're thinking it's C because water boils around 100 degrees Celsius. Then ask, state the phase change that takes place at the stage when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. What happens there, Hope? What phase change happens when the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure? Say again. That is the process, it's boiling, but what phase change happens? From where to where does it go when it boils? Say again. Yes, yeah, so that's the boiling point. But the phase changes from a liquid to a gas. Now they ask, what happens to the temperature of a liquid during phase change? What happens to the temperature during phase change? Rory? When the phase changes. When the phase changes, it remains the same. Oops, it is. Okay, where am I now here? So they say increase or decrease or remains the same. It remains the same. And then they ask the question 3.5. Why? Explain why. Arello. For They ask for two marks, but I want you to mention three things for me. What happens during phase change? Yes, the energy is absorbed. To do what? And then what happens? Page back. Oh, you wrote it down there. 
Didn't you? Rory? To cause a phase change. To cause a phase change. Okay, then the ask, 3.6. Which liquid ABCD has the weakest intermolecular forces? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, Courtney, what do you say? Yeah, which one has the weakest one? A. Why do you say A? Yes, so because A boils at 55 degrees Celsius, it's the lowest of all of them, it's the lowest boiling point. We can assume that because it's the lowest boiling point, it will take the least amount of energy to overcome the forces. So then it must have the weakest forces. So we're going to say A. Why? Well, A has the um, lowest boiling point. I have the lowest boiling point, meaning um, the least oopsie, amount of energy needed to overcome intermolecular forces. Thus, it has the weakest, weakest forces. Checklo, you can hunt. You guys are gonna ask me if you have a question, eh? Yes, I'm saying you will ask when you have a question. If you guys are all just, are you too cold to think? Yes. Is this the first time that you're working in a class today? Because I can see your brains are not warmed up just yet. Okay, 3.7. What is the relationship between vapor pressure of a liquid and the temperature? The vapor pressure of a liquid and the temperature. So they are asking the vapor pressure and the temperature. What is the relationship between them? Sivabatso? That is our first chapter that we did this year. We spoke about... We did this sign here, that sign. <laughs> they are what, say again? <laughs> Remember, well done for remembering something, not transverse. They are directly proportional. You're thinking about inversely proportional. Okay, so the relationship between them, you're going to say the vapor pressure is directly proportional. Proportional to each other, or you can say no, it's directly proportional not to each other to um, temperature, or you can say the higher the temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. Right. Are you all good? So you can see that's the end of the chapter. Now I didn't tell you to bring this book. Did I? I did. Yes. I did. Yes. Okay, I did tell you. And um, please go to page in this book. Please go to page forty-five. Forty-five. Okay. Now. If you did not bring your book, oh, this is the after book. Uh, I will sort of put it on here. Okay. <coughs> so, you can see there, huh? 45. Okay. So you can see there on page 45 and 46 is summaries of this whole chapter. Okay. So it's already summarized for you. 
So you can go through there. There on page six, uh, 46 is all the um, definitions that you need to know. So if there's a definition that I missed in my notes, it's definitely on here. Okay, right. Then you can see there's the um, curves that you need to know. Then there is activities. Okay, activity 9.1, 9.2, 9.3. Then there's an experiment, 10A, and that experiment there looks like a lot like the experiment you're going to do for marks next week. Okay, next week. Yes. This week. All right. Then it goes on the experiment 10B, and then there's another class activity, and then it starts with a new chapter. Okay, so what I want you to do now in class is activity um, a 9.2. You can leave it at 9.2. You can leave out question 2. All right. Then I want you to do question activity 9.3. And 9.4. All right, and you can start with that now. I will put that on Oops, the board. Okay.